All right, everyone, welcome to the uh, Northampton Urban Forestry Commission meeting, February 15th, 2023. Um, we have a quorum, uh, all members are present. Um, uh, public comment period, there is no one from the public other than Kent, if Kent, is Kent want to weigh in? Sure. Hi, Kent. Um, just say, thanks for sending that tree data. I think I can do the analysis you asked for probably pretty easily. Okay. Um, the geocoding is turning out to be maybe more problematic than I expected. So I have to keep, I'll keep working on that. And um, I need to know at some point what geographic areas are of, are of interest. I think Molly, you were gonna work with oh, me on that, so. Yeah. Um I could forward you the um, the page of our spreadsheet that that lists all of our different priorities, and we can talk about it and like like dis dissect what these specific areas are. Okay, that'd be great. So now that um, I know that you've gotten the data, we yeah. should we should set up a date for that. We could do a Zoom thing, and then we could share the screen with that document. Okay. Do you have so, my email? Because I don't um, know. How what to is it? You. What is it? Kent, K E N T, mm -hmm. 3737 at Gmail. Okay. All right. I'll contact you. Okay, great. Thank you, Kent. You're welcome. And you, you, got, you got my email today? Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I should be able to work on that pretty soon. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Whenever you can is fine. Don't, don't, uh, no pressure. Okay. You're, you're a volunteer. It's not like, you know, yep. you, <laughs> there's, yep. there's no deadline date it's okay so um interesting it's, it's interesting there's no one from the public here i'm wondering if um hmm. before, if before yeah i wonder I'll to check if, and see if it's the same um you mean on the uh, city's website on the oh i was gonna oh yeah so so most people would know to come to the meeting through the agenda which was posted according to karen Ah. Um, I I got here from the agenda. Yeah, from the agenda that I sent you, though, right? Because I invited. No, yeah. no, you don't send it to me. I got it from. Oh, the, I'm sorry. We'll we'll website. correct that. I apologize. I'll I'll make sure you're you get it. Do you send agendas to people of the public who've been to our meetings? Uh, sometimes it, if they specifically request it. If not, it just gets posted, and we're pretty consistent in our meetings, so I mm -hmm. it's never really been a problem. If someone asks me, I'll do it, but. Um, I sort of have a, a email listing uh, listserv just for for the commissioners and um, a few of their regular like Tree Northampton volunteers, um, Rich Parish, whose commission appointment is pending, um, ex and um, Bonnie, and I'll add Kent to that too. So I'll check the city website right now and see if it's okay. Got the right address. All right. But you can go ahead. All right. Thank so you. That, that's how I got on just now. From the agenda from the city website. Oh, okay, oh, perfect. Yeah. Okay, all right. Um, okay. Did uh, did folks? I sent you the minutes yesterday. I don't know if you had a chance. You know who had a chance to review them and who didn't. But I've if you, them all set. Everybody, Sue. I don't see Sue. Where's Sue? Hi, yes, Sue. I'm, You're good here. too. I'm good. Okay. Um, is there? Can I get a motion then to I, accept the minutes as? I've, I have one quick, it's just a typo thing. Sure. Underneath Please. underneath STO, the last sentence, it says council will deliberate it. It should be just deliberate. Yeah. Okay. That was the only thing. Bonnie, I, I will share those with you after the meeting um, because I just, I adjusted a couple of things and I don't know if I, they're in the drive. If you want to go into the um, urban forestry drive. Okay. But I'll, I'll get those to you. Um, sorry about that. And the link on the agenda on the website is fine. It's the same one that you sent us. So okay. Yes. Right. Just people are doing other things. Yeah. That is, well, it's beautiful outside. Yeah. I don't blame them. Um, all right. So other than Jen's comment, um, anyone else have anything before we entertain a motion to accept the minutes as amended? No. Okay. Could I get them? Could I get a, Well, I'll make a motion. I make a motion that we accept the minutes as amended by Jen. Second. All right. Uh, thank you, Molly. Is there any discussion on the floor? Uh, seeing none. Uh, Bonnie, can we do a roll call, please? Sure. Thank you. Okay. Susan. 
Abstain, I was absent. Oh, okay. Molly? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Rob? Yes. And David? Yes. Thank you. And, and uh, yes, for me too, I was there. <laughs> Forgot, you gotta, I mean, I don't, you don't have to ask me, it passed without me, so that's fine. <laughs> And you moved it. Yes, this is, <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> um, okay, since our last meeting, uh, let's see what's happened. So since our last meeting, um, we I, we had the uh, um, public shade tree hearing at uh, Coles Metal Road. There were no objections um, that we received. Um, so the, the removals can proceed. Um, we received the mitigation check for, it's like 11, it's almost $1,200. Um, so that's in the process of being deposited in the uh, tree warden um, or the, the tree fund that we use to, to buy, you know, purchase public shade trees and amenities. Uh, Sue sent out an email. The, commu uh, the community tree conference um, is next Tuesday, the 28th. I think it's the 28th on Tuesday. Um, so that should be in your inbox. If you're interested in going, there are some some interesting speakers. Uh, somehow or another, I was uh, the poster person, the poster child for the um, for a tree planting we did somewhere. I, I don't know, but they have me bent down planting a tree. So everyone that got an email that invited them, I was in the picture and one of my employees said, "Hey, you're on the you're you're on the you're on the an email or again a picture of you." I'm like, "What are you talking about?" So yeah, there I was. Yeah, so I'm like, "Well, you know, good, it's good publicity for our our, uh, our initiative." Was it your good side? Uh, yes, it was because there was my face wasn't there. It was just the back of my head. Back. Oh, come on. So yeah, I love love those photos. Um, um, I'm gonna try to think of what else I had for you. I have not been in contact with um, Dave Bloniars regarding the tree canopy um, um, assessment. Um, I did, uh, so I'm, I'm still following up with him. Um, I did reach out to Dr. Uh, Professor Rogan um, from Clark University to try to get um, him, try to get his he and his team to come to one of our meetings. He is going to, he, he couldn't make this meeting. Um, I didn't hear from him. So I'm assuming it was too short notice. So hopefully we'll have a presentation from them sometime in March. Awesome. And then um, I'm hoping that they will um, consider us as a community that they can do some of their um, environmental justice, uh, urban heat island studies, um, because we've planted, you know, to 19, we've planted uh, 1,900, and 60 something odd trees. Mm -hmm. So that was the other thing I wanted to tell you. We distilled the data um, for tree planting for 2022. We took out all the dead trees um, that were removed and then we dumped them into the master list, which um, I made a copy for Kent, which is our tree planting list from 2015 to present. Um, and it also in that list includes the tree plantings that, we, that were done on um, Pleasant Street, King Street by the two contractors and also the trees planted on Carlin Drive as part of the uh, fire department uh, uh, renovation of their parking lot. Mm -hmm. So um, that pushed us to like 267 trees planted altogether citywide this year, roughly. And again, those numbers might be off. I don't have the, I don't have it directly in front of me, but it's roughly that's the number. So Rich, it was somebody did someone or the, to the group did someone volunteer to take that list and distill out um how many trees we planted of different species families and genuses yeah so so the list is um the list is distilled that way um and then i sent it to kent and uh, kent is going to do some uh really uh some analysis um some type of either pie i don't know kent what you call him you want to might want to chime in but some kind of like a pie graph uh -huh. And some type of flow charts. And again, Kent, I'm probably getting all this wrong, but um, I'll let you speak to that. Um, I'm not sure what the best way to represent it will be. Yeah, it probably must be tables, maybe pie charts. I'm not really sure yet. Do you have the Davy the Davy tree 
survey to integrate I, with that? I don't have that data, no. So, Rich, is that that's available still, right? I mean, yeah, it's a, it's available. And then I I think what I would like to do is when uh when Kent has got sort of a draft of what he'd like to do, I I'm gonna I can make pie charts right from Davey, uh, the website on my, on the side that I have, the administrator side, oh. and make some compare and try to make them look comparatively similar. Um, unless Kent, maybe you and I should maybe discuss that outside of this meeting, just to try to figure out if there's a way to uh, maybe inter integrate both of those pie charts in um, your presentation. So. Yeah, or if you can send me the Davey data, I can just analyze that directly. Okay. All right. Well, let me let me see how let me see what I can do with that. Okay. Yeah, I I like just raw data. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, Good for you. So much. Good yeah, for you. Ken, yeah. Yeah. You're Ken. You're the best. I. <laughs> well, what would be great is to see where we were when Davy did the survey. Exactly what species we had of what trees, how many, and then see what we've planted. Is it, and then see what where we are now in terms of what we have all together that's that's really the, what i'm interested in and uh yeah i don't know how many trees have been removed but you, rich you have that too so yeah there's uh not all not all the work orders are closed so it's not going to show all the um that's an ongoing process that i just it's another catch-up that i have to get better at we seem to be able to move, remove trees quicker than i can log them in um mm -hmm. But uh, like, for example, this year we removed 69 trees and we planted 260 some odd trees um, as re as replacements. So, you know, our, our ratio is 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 really good in comparison to uh, many years that I worked here prior to this initiative. So um, and then I also completed the Tree City USA um, application. So that's been submitted. Um, we. Our uh, per capita expenditures were, and I can I can report out a little more at our next meeting once I get a it gets approved from Tree City USA, is about thirty one dollars. Last year was twenty six and change. So um, what tipped the scales? Um, I believe this year from my calculations was the two contracts, the two contracts uh, that we have the one contract for the tree removals, which uh, we expended um, roughly uh, eighty nine thousand dollars for tree removals. Um, and that's spanning over two two different contracts over the last year, because don't forget our fiscal year ends June 30th. Yeah. But contracts, usually this type of contract goes from, um, went from January until most recently December. So it, it cycles over two fiscal years. So right. our allocation is 50,000, but we've utilized in this one calendar year uh, more than that. Um, and Tree City USA is calculated not by a fiscal year, but by calendar year. Um, and then we we qualified for the growth award again. Um, so we achieved 10 points very easily. Right. Um, so hopefully I'll, we'll get a um, I'll get approval from Tree City USA and then I'll have a little more to report on that. But um, and I did get yelled at by DCR because I was late. So, oh, I, <laughs> but that's OK. It's my own fault. Uh, Molly. Um, when you keep track of the um, removals, do you keep track of what species and what size or else key them to the Davy report? Yeah. So basically when removals are done, there's a work order generated for inspection, a work order generated for whatever the inspection result is. And if it's a removal, when the work is complete, I go back in, I, um, lot, I add the hours of work it took to remove it. It calculates how much uh, it costs to remove the tree. Um, and then I close, I actually change the um, tree, uh, the tree location or the unique ID to um, either a, 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 a plant, I usually change them to planting sites. Um, so it's large, medium or small trees. And that's, so you have a archival history for every single location of what was there. Oh, um, okay. And you can Great. pull the data out to tell you how many trees you removed, where they were, how big they were um, from year to year. Um, it's just a matter of connecting the dots and, and making sure everything that you, all the work orders are closed for that particular calendar year. And so, species too? Yes. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I keep track of all that. So when I go and do a tree inspection, I don't actually take 
sometimes I'll take the tablet with the um, um, that has the uh, web link to it, and I'll actually do it in the field. But nine times out of ten, I actually take a book. I have an actual hard book that I use, and I put all my notes in there, and then I transfer them into the um, the work order system. I'm a little old fashioned that way, but I, you know, if the data we have lives somewhere else, it doesn't live in our servers. It lives on Davy's, um, sorry, in in space somewhere, um, and it's managed by Davy. So at least I have a paper copy. If that were to fail, or I didn't have access to Smart. their website, which has happened in the past. So I sort of am a little redundant. I do a little redundancy in that aspect, but so yeah, you you can you can have, find all that data pretty easily. Um, and I I think that's really about it. We Probably. met with uh, the leads yesterday. Oh, oh. Lead. yep, that's actually not on. I mean, Jen, we could talk about that on, under spring planting and Arbor Day oh, if you okay. want to. Yep, perfect. I just like, I gave I gave us twenty five minutes. The the agenda is a little broad in time because I thought we were going to have a presentation. So that's yeah. fine. Okay. Did you meet with the Conway School students? Yes, I did, and that was a uh, again. Thank you for reminding me. That was an that was a really great Zoom. It was about an hour long, um, and the Conway School Design folks are working for. Um, I can't remember the name of the community. It'll come to me eventually, um, but they are um, trying to actually uh, formulate two different ordinances. From what I could gather, one is an ordinance similar to our existing STO. Um, and then the other ordinance would be possibly um, public shade tree regulations, similar to what we have um, here in Northampton, but ours are not or an ordinance. Our public shade tree regulations are part of our permit um, regulations for trench permits. Right. So um, I kind of gave them a bunch of information. Uh, a lot of the work that we've done, I gave them a copy of the existing STO um, I'm going to share with them eventually the draft STO once um, the mayor puts an order together and it goes in front of council. I'll share that with them so they can see it. Um, I shared with them the regulations. Uh, I shared with them my not, you know, just uh, other documentation of uh, um, like public shade tree hearings and how that all works because I, the tree warden in that community is, I believe, the director of public works. And they have a they have a, they've been retained. The Conway School was retained by their um, volunteer commission, similar to what you know our commission would be, um, to actually help them um, develop ordinances and other policies to manage uh, public and potentially private shade trees. Hmm. So it was a really interesting conversation. I mean, it's a project that they're on a really tight timeline they have to be they have to have a, a a base presentation in by i think the middle of march so they are reaching out to other communities as well hmm. so it, it, it was it was it was in, it was really good you know it's it, i have a tendency to forget all of our accomplishments um, until i actually have a conversation with someone um outside of our group that asks about our our initiative and it's like wow we've really accomplished a lot Mm. Although it seems like we haven't at times, I think because of the way we meet possibly or the pandemic and the end result of that. But I really think we've been able to, to really um, get a lot accomplished in our, between, you know, 2015 and, and present. It's pretty impressive. So kudos to all of you. Thank you. Um, and that's it. Any questions? All right. Um, all right. Goals and objectives. Molly, I have to. Uh, hold on part two. Let me just go over. Let me find you. Molly. Yeah, okay. Right, so hold on one second. Yep. Um, hey, co host. Okay. You should be. You should be good. Okay. Here we go. All right. There we go. Everybody can see it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So what do you want to do with this? I'll, here's the top. I mean, I think uh, I think now that you've sort of cleaned it up from our last meeting, mm -hmm. I I think we I think we should 
just go through them again to make sure that everyone um, I under, understands. And this is in our drive, so people can see this. Um, I believe, right, Molly? This is not. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is in our, our drive. And then what I can do is I can share this document again directly with commissioner. So it lands in the top of your email inbox. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we should just go through this one more time and just sort of see where everyone's at and make sure everyone is okay with whatever their assignments might be. Yeah. And then I think we just sort of need to move forward. Um, I think we also need to be realistic too, that there's probably things on here that we probably won't be able to get to um, just given the way things are, even though we meet twice a month and we do have subgroup meetings. So, um, so Molly, if you wanted to. Okay. First, I'm going to get rid of these two columns. Okay. Um, they're, they're old. Uh, there, now we can see this one better. So, um, yeah. Okay, Rich, are you going to get? No, I'll just do the green ones because those are the ones that we talked about before. Okay. Um, assemble listserv of tree wardens and other groups. Who wants to do that? So, so that is, um, I you can stick my name in there because I'm going to be working. Um, and part of my role as uh, the vice president of Mass Tree Wardens is to work with DCR to update the the list that they have. Mm -hmm. Um. And I believe that there's actually funding at the DCR level this year um, to hire possibly, uh, according to Julie Coop, an intern to do this type of project. So we might have some assistance. So let me follow up with Julie. Um, there is there is a link or there, there is uh, on the Mass Tree Wardens website, um, a drop down box that does um, have, uh, you know, who is your tree warden in your community? Um, but it, it's not, it's an individual, you know, it's not designed to be a listserv. It's just individual contact uh, phone numbers and names, et cetera, and, and emails. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. This one here, departmental accreditation. I'm not even sure what that means. Um, and this was only just in terms of getting points for the, um, for the, for that program. Growth award. Yeah. The growth award. So so Molly, I would just you want to white it out? Yep. Happy okay. to white it. Okay. Um, okay, urban tree canopy assessment. Um so we, you can get rid of Wayne's name and put yeah. Carolyn in there. Yep. And who was the other person you were talking to? Uh David Bloniars. Oh yeah. Yep. So you, yep. Okay, and we don't, we can just get rid of this part, I think. Yep. Rich, can I ask you about the LIDAR survey? Sure. I'll tell you, you've said this a bunch of times, but so the LIDAR equipment is mounted on like a small aircraft, right? So the, the survey is done. When, do you know when, when the last one was done? The last LIDAR survey, I think, was done in 2000. 17 or 18 maybe mm -hmm. um and the city had to the city the the city at has piggybacked on other lidar surveys that other government entities have done but the city had to pay for the last one um so i need to i can double check with uh carolyn um obviously u.s forest service has a lot bigger reach um they use satellite data um so that is also um probably a better a better a better lift but i again it's kind of uh dave is very busy and it's kind of hard to get a hold of him to be truthful with you, but he's you know and he freely admits that um i have a question does that answer your, does that answer your question david oh. uh it, it it does the only follow-up is uh when was the prior lidar survey if the latest one was 2017 or 2018 uh that i don't know I'd have to, I'll make a note to ask. Thank you. Okay. And yeah, I, that was my question too, is if we have 17, what was before that? And if you could just open it up and say, 
you know, what's the extent, how many have there been and, you know, a list of all of them. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. You know, the, the urban tree canopy assessment, I know my name is on the right hand side, but anyone uh, that's willing to like join me working on that, that would be helpful um, if someone's interested. I mean, I know I have to ask a few questions, but I think in the end, it's going to be a little more than just asking a few questions, but just, just putting that out there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Can yeah. members of the public be part of this? Yeah, I mean, I think so. If we have a if we have one other commissioner on there, then we'll probably have to do a public meeting if we're going to have uh, if we're going to have any kind of open discussion about um, potentially something that might come back in front of the commission for some type of a vote. Um, but yes, I don't, I don't see why not. I mean, we've invited members of the public to participate many times over the years to work on different. Um, um, I don't want to put him on the spot, but maybe we could invite Kent. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's not really something I know anything about other than seeing what happened was done in Cambridge, which I think you can learn as much as I know by reading their report, probably. They okay. have a LIDAR survey done and then they contract out to uh, University of Vermont to do the analysis. And it's a it's an extensive process and quite time consuming, but none of it is done by this by the city itself. <clears throat> uh, Ken, I just do you, the LIDAR survey that was done for Cambridge that was paid for by the city of Cambridge? I think so. And then the data was shipped off to UVM? Yes. Okay. And they come back with a extensive analysis. They do a report and there's also um, data that they make available with like the location of the trees and things. Okay. I, I was thinking the UVM liaison would be a really interesting guest speaker. If mm. So that would be, that would be Jarlith. I can, um, I can reach out to them. Yeah, that'd be interesting how they do that analysis. Okay. But Rich, once you get the LIDAR data and we sort of see what it what it is, then maybe we can add somebody onto that job to figure out what to do next. I mean, we can. We could also, um, as Ken indicated, the Cambridge report is very extensive. I mean, there is the possibility. I don't know how much the that cost to do that work. Um, I don't know if that would be something that we would want to do the same thing if we feel like we're not um, able to get um, the information that we need, like working with U.S. Forest Service, for example, then maybe we could maybe we could think about trying to figure out how much it cost. Might have been a, probably an RFQ. I, I don't know. I mean, Kent, do you have any idea how much that report cost? No, you're probably right that there's there must be a contract. Um, I mean, I can't imagine it's cheap because it takes a long time and it's a long report, but I really don't know. Okay. All right. So I, I can ask questions. Andrew, uh, know what you know. Yeah, that maybe some... oh. Andrew might be a good person to ask. Um, that may be something we could uh, potentially write that grant for that, uh, you know. Yep. So I don't know if I'm remembering correctly, but I thought that um, Andrew said that the Vermont just happened to be where they were for some reason, but that he thought that going to UMass might be reasonable, or there might be someone there. Um, that it wasn't that there wasn't a special reason that necessarily to go to Vermont. Does anyone remember that? When... No, but I like the sound of it. <laughs> I think that's what he said. Yeah, it might just be for consistency because this was their third round with this and the previous ones were also with UVM. I know there is a whole mapping department at UMass. I know a couple of people who work in that. Um, I don't know what who they work for. 
it might just be the extension service or something. I'm not sure. Well, let me let me ask. I can just ask questions. So let me let me try yeah. to know. All right. Okay, next um number eight, I took off, I put it in white since it's already done. Okay. Um number nine, forest health assessment. Um I don't know. That doesn't sound like something we talked about doing. I don't know why it's in green. Um, I mean, the for, you know, forest health assessment kind of reminds me of um, uh, when we have a, you know, we have someone from, um, I can't, I can see her, I can't remember, Nicole Kelleher is our, uh, our forester, our state forester. Mm -hmm. She, she sort of gives a forest health assessment on a statewide scale. Um you know, I think this, I think this would, this was for a forest for, this was for the growth award as well for mm -hmm. the forest health assessment. If we had one done like for our conservation areas or for wooded areas of the city. Mm. So I, I don't personally see us doing that at the moment. No, um, not either. If, if everyone's okay, we'll just white it out. <clears throat> All right. Number 10 species list and public tree care guide. So Jen is on there. Yep. Rich and I need to make an appointment to just see where we're at and then we can go from there. I, I can figure out what to do from there. Yep. <laughs> this is out of date. Yeah. 2023. Okay. Now, policy or plan update. So we already did the STO. Do we want to put something in there about um, possibly, um, I don't know what we want to say, possibly looking into um, restrictions on private trees? I I think it'd be premature to put that in there, personally, yeah, until, we get it, until we get the data, because it could just stir up unnecessary yeah issues if we're if it turns like i don't think i don't think we should put that in writing i agree yep what do you what do other people think i'm I I'm, in, I'm in agreement with jen okay i'll put that, put that in white for now well, we all know we we're it, talking about it before you put it in white i, mean, I might have missed something but we're trying we um with kent's help we're trying i think to uh or with the LIDAR, I guess, we're trying to find out whether we're losing canopy or not and then do something about it. So did that get in here somewhere? Well, that's that's what Jen was saying, though. The first step is to do the LIDAR and find out if it's even an issue. Right. Excellent. But not yeah. to put it in like we're going to do something before we know if we really need to do it. Good. Yeah. Um, Molly, could you and, and you know, I'm just going to put this the the STO um is not on the city council agenda for tomorrow but it may be on the city council agenda in in march so um i where it says done um i would say done or or uh slash in in progress because mm -hmm. we may end up um it may end up getting kicked back to us at, so, at some point um if through the public hearing process the planning board okay uh a, a, a committee on legislative matters asked for a revision or other recommendations so okay so our end is done but it's now in the now. legislative hands in the in their hands so okay and i and i will keep you posted about when that's going to be on the agenda because it would be helpful to possibly have a couple of commissioners there so yeah for sure okay number 12 um i was going to do that last year and i never did so I'll try to do it again this year. Identifying cut through streets. Um, now this one, we need somebody to work on this one. Um, this is evaluating the neighborhood tree planting program, the one where we get neighbors to, you know, nominate their their street to get trees and they organize neighbors and stuff like that. I'd be willing to do that. All right. I'll do it with Sue, but I have a question. Can two people meet without having an official meeting, or you have to post it? No, post. Yeah, if you're gonna, if you're gonna, uh, 
you know, if uh, you if you, you and I, Rob, are out in the street staking out trees, that's that's one thing. But if uh, you and I are out in the street and we're um, talking about potentially making changes to a particular um, policy or procedure that will come back in front of the full uh, the full body, then you would probably have to have a public meeting. Public so hearing. it might make it more streamlined for me not to meet with um, Sue. Well, I mean, so the thing is, is that the if you are going to end up, I mean, then Sue would be doing it by herself. But yeah. if um, if Sue needs assistance from another commissioner and you need to meet, you, we should just post it. I mean, it's just safer to post the meeting. Um, and I know it's a little bit of uh, work on my part because I have to post them, but it doesn't yeah. really matter to me. I, I'll do it. I'd rather be. Okay. I have a suggestion that we put it on the um, agenda as an item for me to lead a discussion on, come sure. up with some criteria. That's and good then I could follow through with some steps, get in touch with the people who were involved in it, and then find some other metrics for evaluating it. That's okay. a good idea. Yeah. Trees planted, different aspects. So if we could put it on an agenda coming up. Um, yep. If we all agreed in public on the criteria, that I could just fill in the blanks. Mm -hmm. Sound good? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. The next six are all in white because they're just things that that go on anyway. Mm -hmm. So they don't really need a specific assignment. Um, number twenty is um, we we did look into it. Well, um, David and. Rich looked into it, I think, about timber, but not for firewood. Are we interested in still looking into that? I mean, there is a level of me that says that yes, we. I I think it would be, it would be great to have an urban wood bank. Um, I just am not sure that given the capacity. So in a lot of other communities, the they usually have volunteers that manage it. So like, a, for example, a group like Tree Northampton. Um, and given the commitment that um, because the, the Urban Wood Bank would be, um, if we had one, would work um, in um, or would be a collaboration between Public Works and the volunteer organization, the people that staff it. Um, mainly most of these wood banks you have volunteers come in and they process the wood they split it they stack it they shrink wrap it or they however they and then it gets distributed to individuals at their transfer station or mm -hmm. some other location so i mean from from our from our ten thousand foot view at the moment i think it would be still good to look at it and try to figure out if it's something that we can actually do in this in northampton and if we have, um, if we can identify a volunteer group or um, an organization. I wonder that, if there's a group like um, some sort of group that works with um, home heating fuel aid or, you know, something like that. A group that like works with low income housing, I mean, low income households to um, help them with their their fuel prices i know this is such a group yeah yeah heat assistance yeah i mean i actually think that's that's an interesting concept i um i think we would probably have to reach out to oh i i i, I want to say service net but i don't think i always say service net because i that's oh it's like uh community action or something community, they changed thank you. their name they changed their name yeah they did so it, if if that would be interesting to find out what kind of you know i know that they give heat assistant for fossil fuels um the question is do they give heat assistant for like purchasing of pellets right or firewood um and do they have any experience um working with other communities that have wood banks An another idea is i just thought of this maybe there's a place at the recycling center similar to where they give out sand um that we could just you know that wood could be you know it would have to be uh, whether it's going to be cut and split or whether it's just going to be cut and not split that it could be there for people to take yeah so that's a possibility but the <clears throat> the issue one of the things that uh, we are our, our removal contract that we have 
um, is specific on the size of uh, the diameter of trees um, that the, they're, they, they chip. So we, um, we chip everything up to 20 inches in diameter. Oh, no. That's yeah. exactly what's the perfect firewood. Right. So oh. and that, that reduces the volume of uh, the large wood waste that we have at the wood waste facility, which oh. is like the very large butt logs that are there from. Our, oh. So what ends up happening is those those chips, though, they don't go to waste. They just get put back out in front of the transfer station and people take them away. I mean, we can't keep up with it. Oh, so again, oh. this would this yeah. would be well, this would be a conversation. So, you know, we could change our contract to make it so everything up to, you know, 10 inches or, you know, um, anything below 10 inches is chipped. Yeah. Um, and then anything between point, you know, 10 inches and the remaining material goes to the, to the wood waste facility. But the thing is, is that it, we have to make sure mm -hmm. that we actually have um, an urban wood bank that actually functions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you need somebody to be, um, you know, chainsawing the pieces up and split with a splitter correct you know, it could be a volunteer who does yep, that yep. It, it, it it could be but i think um and i'm not going to speak for Free northampton but given the given the level of work that they're already doing yeah we can you know i i don't i'm not saying it would necessarily be true northampton it could be a completely different like it could be maybe a like a tree um service company who might do it for some sort of public you know yeah. public good or whatever yeah, it's too yeah. bad we can't, you know, it's too bad we can't uh, get something going with uh, uh, the vocational school. I mean, that would be perfect. Mm. The city drops us. The other last school I worked at, the city dropped off wood in the behind the school. Oh. And when this other teacher was not teaching chainsaws, Oh. They, would, they would cut it, split it, stack it, and then we sold it and got money off of it. But oh. you know, um, but we've had we've had some struggle, and I have relationships with the two teachers up there. I we've just had struggles, kind of getting things going with them, and you know, maybe in the future that's you know, to me that would be like the way to go. You know, yeah, that's a great idea. And then you could limit the volunteers to just showing up the days we were giving it away or you know yeah because hmm. I, mean, I think in i think today us. i think today in the type of i i don't know about the liability of having uh, like volunteers use chains yeah i was thinking that's not going to work but maybe I mean, if we're if you're up in you know barry vermont or something maybe <laughs> but you know i just i have a hard time you know, but I think it's worth looking into. I don't think it should be an emergency priority, but if somebody wanted to do some background checking, you know, and we can move from there. Well, you're, the idea of doing it at Smith Folk would circumvent the whole liability thing, which is right. huge. Right. I, I have another idea. <laughs> I, I know there are limit, limit, limits on what can be given away, that there are rules. But Rich, what if um, the contract just said, um, leave everything in a pile that's between six inches and 20 inches. And then we just invited people who are capable, people who sell firewood or whatever, to just come and take it or give it to them. Um, two things. It would be a little cost prohibitive because um, when you are cutting up fire, you know, when you're cutting up brush, when you take a tree down, yeah. And you can take a 20 inch diameter leader and shove it in the chipper. It's gone. It's right. only handled once. Right. So start dicing things up and trying to make firewood out of it on site, or at least like six foot lengths yeah. and then stacking it up on the sidewalk or near the sidewalk. It potentially can become um, not cost effective. Yeah. It also can become a hindrance, especially if whoever's supposed to pick it up, doesn't pick it up. Um, I mean, even now we leave wood for people when they ask for it, when we're doing a removal um, and we're like, do you, okay, do you want the butt log? That's that big, you know, 30 inch DBH. Oh yeah. I'll take the butt log. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. You know, and then we go away and about a week later I get a, you know, and we're there with all of our equipment. And then I get a, a week later, I get a phone call or an email and like, um, 
we actually realized the butt lock is a little too large. And I know, Rob, that's not what you're talking about, but um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, I mean, we do leave wood behind when people request it. Right. You know, so we will buck it up, but we don't do it. Uh, on, we don't do it on a regular basis unless it's a request. Right. Um, and um, I'm curious, I, what do they do with all the chips from our dead trees? Uh, people take them and use them in their yards. So you could all get the chips go everything. in that bin at Locust Street. No, yep, everything, everything the DPW generates uh, goes in that goes is stored up top at the DPW yard or at the wood waste facility, and then brought back and utilized um, throughout the spring, summer, and fall. We use all of that as I mean, I'm one of the people who goes and gets them. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> it's gone. I love them. It's gone, actually. I think um, we don't really need to worry about an urban wood bank. If it's already being used, it may not be the absolute highest, best use, but it's a system that's already in place. It's working. People like having the chips. So I think we should just keep doing that. Okay. Or, or you can you can put a little, you can put possible next to it or just white it out for now. I, I you know, either way, we can ask questions, but I, I do think that it's, I think there's a lot of questions that have to be asked about how it's best to reuse it. And given the model that we presently have and the lack of a identified volunteer resource. Yeah. If anybody is interested in doing this, speak up now, or I'll just leave it as it is. Uh, Molly, question about the screen share is if, are, are you, are we on the wrong tab? Because it looks like there's a 2023 goals. that's different from what you have to say. I'm on chart of annual goals. Right, but then see at the bottom, there are different tabs. Tab. Uh-oh, am I in the wrong one all this time? Oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Wait, I think you redid it. We needed no. to have the conversation anyway. <laughs> I think, oh, Thanks, no. Thanks, David. <laughs> well, we can, you can You're right. Them up. I was on the wrong friggin' page. That's but that's the one we looked at even last week, our last uh, two weeks ago. Yeah. Because we didn't look at this one. That's because it's the old one. Or it's a, what was the one I was just looking at? Uh, 2021, 20 oh. 20, that one. Yeah, you're right. Shoot. All right. Well, it's probably not going to be that different. I can go back and fix it so it matches up. Okay. All right, but let's see. So where were we? we were um, da, 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 da. um the herb, the uh herb, the urban wood bank was whited out in this one already. So yeah, yeah, that's right. It's not even there. I think yeah. you're down farther. Is that oh, and and also Sue said she was going to do this. Yep. Okay. We're down farther. There you go. There oh, so there's the wood bank. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. So where are we? Um, tree protection ongoing enforcement proceedings generally happens each year. Um, this is again, this is just for the purpose of getting the points for the tree yep. growth board if open space was acquired. Um, cooperative partnerships. Um, well on our way. Yeah. Does anybody want to work on that? Oh, I talked to Girl Scouts. They want to help again. Okay. Yeah, cooperative. Show, Sorry, go ahead, Sue. Good to show we're working with different community, different types of community organizations and that a lot of diversity. Go ahead, Rich. No, I mean uh, like cooperative partnerships um was one of the um tabs that I I was able to tick off and get points for because we we planted all the trees with the uh, Rotary Club um, and um, um, uh, Benai Israel. Um, so they're, they're so getting more community partnerships and other community players involved is always a really good. Yeah, it's good in a lot of different ways. It helps with the the growth award, obviously, in our tree seed, but also helps with just getting our overall message across and and working with people that have like minded goals uh, for the environment. So we I had the Pioneer Valley Chinese Immersion Charter School last year. I don't know. Yes, we did. And I did not um oh. I, I did not add that when I did the rotary when I yeah. did the initial um 
cooperative partnerships because you're only allowed to do one upload per tab. Oh. So I can't upload more than one article because they asked for like verification who they were, when, what you did. So I, I used the Rotary Club one because we had a nice article from the Daily Hampshire Gazette, et cetera. So just right. a, yeah. a little side comment, but. <laughs> wow. Okay, um, 28, new board member, hopefully Richard um, Parrish. Yes. Coming on. Yep. Um, service organizations is white, okay. Volunteer tree care, it's happening. Mm -hmm. um, help with SLF monitoring, maybe. We don't know yet. Jen and I have to meet to decide what our next steps are. Sorry, what's SLF? Spotted lanternfly. Oh, spot oh yeah. Um, is, is anybody interested in making a state of the urban forest report to city council at some point this year, maybe at the end of the year? Maybe after we do our plantings. I mean, it sounds like we need data. Mm. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I agree with Sue. I think it, we do need data and we, we will have data on trees we've planted, um, the existing inventory that uh, we can do some comparisons with. And then also, maybe by that point, we'll have some information about um, what our overall canopy looks like. Mm -hmm. So that is definitely something I think we should think about. We've never stood in front of city council. I mean, we don't we don't report to the city council. We report, you know, we advise the mayor and the tree warden. Um, but I think that you know, we with I think the mayor would be supportive of us um, doing a um, um, state of the urban forest report. I don't know. I think it would be kind of interesting. It's never it would been help her. Um, you know, it helps solidify support, get our voices out there for the trees. In general, it might be a good practice for us to do yearly. Yeah. Like annual report, because then you yeah. document, you know, you have documentation that if ever a, a mayor comes in who's not supportive or if we have to defend uh, finances or something, you can, you know, you've already got these, you know, uh reports that you can refer to and then it's pretty easy to um you know use iTree or something and you could just generate financials from that you know this is how much stormwater we've added to sequestration or so how much co2 we've you know do we have enough data to have something general that we could present at some point of course it all falls on rich not necessarily. It could be anybody. I mean, it could be just something simple, like, you know, we could have categories. Um, you know, somebody just needs to take it on. Like, we could have categories like volunteers or community plantings or, and then just general numbers. And then if there's something like the LIDAR information or, you know, we write a grant or something, we could just have some simple items that we, you know, just like you get a from a mm -hmm. stock thing or something that you just here's the you know here's the or or any nonprofit I you know donate money to they give you a little summary of the year you know. So what I just want to just rem it's twenty five after we're almost done though right Mom? yeah yeah this is the bottom. Um, I think so. I've given multiple PowerPoint presentations to different organizations throughout the state um regarding um uh, regarding our program um and i think that would be something that I, I don't i don't think you know city councilors know that we're out there working the residents know we're out there working the cs planting but i don't think they really maybe have the uh zoomed in view of actually what we've accomplished in the last yeah. uh, seven years yeah so i think it would be interesting to um, give a PowerPoint presentation that is also streamlined, but it embedded because my power, the PowerPoint I, I developed lasts for about 45 minutes. Oh yeah. We want so, much, more. much, yeah. much. More. So I, I think it would be five or 10 minutes, maybe. Yep. Yeah. Is there yeah, anything I, interested I in doing that? I, I'm interested in thinking about it. I just don't know how we're going to codify our whole operation in five minutes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. You no, know, if you you know, like it would be like trying to say the DPW what the DPW does in five minutes is this. 
Right. Water mm -hmm. sewer roads, plowing, street signs. Uh, <laughs> yeah, category. Just give them information that would be new to all of us, which would be just, if, if Kent produces these pie charts, just say, look, this is what we had. This is what we, this is what we now have um, in terms of species diversity and numbers of trees. I mean, so, I even think, I even think just, having numbers you know ballpark numbers of hours of volunteers you know numbers or hours of volunteers i mean that just gives an indication of the like support we have in the community you know there's people you know there's people that are doing a lot of hours yeah. so it could just be the presentation of some very very basic metrics it's just a few of them taken off of the uh reports that we've done annually which is how many hours, how many trees, how are the canopies changing? That's it. Just, I mean, I think it's impossible to describe all, to really get a comp, any kind of comprehensive understanding of what we're doing. Um, well, it's not, it's not hard to describe. I've done it many times, but no, it I mean just, the time frame that would be a, a yeah, it, it's, it's lengthy. And, and yeah. so I, yeah, I mean, I think we need to think about it. So let's just, I see I got volunteered, which is great. Thank you, Molly. Um, <laughs> let's let's leave it in there. And okay. I think we'll just kind of. Would, can I just ask um, one last question? Would, what would be a good season to, to do that kind of presentation? When would it make strategically the, the most end sense? Of, the end of the year, you know, to say that it's, it's just what we did this year. I yes. think that's a reasonable time that we have a little breathing room also it, yeah. for, for people to be able to work on it you know it, it is a, it, just one other thing i want to mention about this and we can I'm move sorry. on is that this is the kind of thing that you if you ever have you ever read the city budget um the budget narrative you know the mayor has multiple pages of uh in the beginning of the budget that talks about a lot of the goals um and objectives that were achieved in in a calendar year that actually this could actually be part of the city budget Oh, because in essence, well, oh. because in essence, we we are advisory to the mayor. We are reporting to the mayor that we've done X in a given time frame. Um, and if we were to do that, it would be uh, by fiscal year. So it would be part of the budget message. So we do codify how many trees we plant in the city budget somewhere. I think, Donna, you know what we're responsible for. But I, I think the mayor would want to weigh in on what kind of presentation Mm -hmm. and what it would look like and who we give it to mm -hmm. so, maybe maybe it could be just in the budget written up instead of giving an actual presentation that would take up it, people's time yep it, that is a possibility too but that's a question i'd have to ask her mm -hmm. so that you can just leave me in there as being um the responsible party and i will um next time i meet with the mayor i'll ask the question okay uh Sorry. let's see door hangers We've got that all set. Um, Rob, Alicia, Jen. Oh, there should be a line here. Um, Rob, Alicia, and Jen are going to work on door hangers. I don't think that was me. Not you? I don't think so. Okay. Anybody else want to work on that? Uh, I, I'm going to send the door hangers that I have out. So I, uh, you can, I guess you can stick my name in there. So it reminds me that I have to do that. You're going to send them out to the printer or to the. No, I'm going to send them out to Rob and Alicia and, and um, right. whoever else wants to see them before. Okay. It looks like Rob and Alicia. Anybody else want to work on that? Can you add Rich in there? Yep. Thank you. Great. I have to now write out Parasoliti every time because the new Rich also P A R. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. The way the way you you say Rich in Texas, Rich. Right. Oh. Yeah. Which one? Which one is which? Rich uh, Parish. 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 You can say Texas Rich and Connecticut uh, Rich because that's where we came from. Right. Where where, where did you come from? Connecticut. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so public outreach about spotted lanternfly 
Jen mm -hmm. and I will work on that. Organize Arbor Day. Sue's going to work on that. And I think that's that's it. I'll go back and fix this earlier part that where I was working from the wrong year. Yeah, Molly, it would be good to if you have the time to sort of just kind of clean this, clean it up a little bit so we can actually um like you said, just fix it up and actually just I guess we can we can all look at this. It's a good document to look at to figure out what we're supposed to be working on. Mm. And then as a co individual commissioners or the lead person, we could contact the other parties mm. and then we could sort of try to work on some of these issues. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Molly, for managing this. I appreciate it. Oh, sure. Okay. Okay. I'll stop sharing now. Okay. Any other questions about the goals and objectives or the goals before we go on to our next item? Okay. Um, I did uh, I did add the tree selection criteria for public and setback planting document um, only because I wasn't sure if there were going to be, if people wanted to have a discussion about that document or by the accepting of the minutes, we are good with that document. Um, and if you are good with the document, then yeah. I will get Karen to post it as a standalone um, PDF on um, on this on our website. If you're okay with that, I thought it was great. Okay, it is great. Um, so it's okay to go ahead and put it on Tree Northampton. Uh, let me uh, yeah, let me just let me run it by Karen. I, in case Karen has some suggested changes, not to the okay. actual text. Um, the body of the text, but just its appearance. Mm -hmm. And then that way there, we have the same uh, looking document on both websites. So I will get that to Karen tomorrow. Super. Great. Okay. Thank you, Jen. I think you you did a lot of good work there. It's something that's yeah. been waiting to be done for five or six, eight years. You're huge, welcome. huge thanks, Jen. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Yeah, Boy, I mean, you tried to explain that to people over mm -hmm. and over. I mean, I, I think it's a great document because it actually explains the process that we go through. It doesn't necessarily, um, it and it 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 basically codifies it. It it sort of explains how we got to the tree list and planting guidelines. Mm -hmm. So next time, Jen, when we meet, we that actually would be a suggestion. We put that mm -hmm. that disclaimer in the front of the tree list and planting guidelines as uh, one of our revisions that way there, people know how we got to the species list that's in the backside of this document. Mm -hmm. um, and all, all the while, you know, we're not, we're not saying, we're not saying that we, we don't want to plant native trees at all. We're saying we want to plant native trees, but we also recognize the fact that, um, you know, we are um, in, in, a, in a warming USDA hardiness zone. And so some of the existing native trees that we have are moving actually farther north mm -hmm. um, while we're trying to introduce new species. And this is how we're doing it. You know, and that's why I think it's great. I think people, I, I mean, I understand the, how, how people feel about natives and I respect that. And I, I do feel the same way, but I also understand that potentially 50 years from now, some of the trees that we're accustomed to are not going to be in our back door, uh, mm -hmm. our backyard, I should say. So is uh, that going to be posted where? on the city website under it, it, it would be posted Warden. under the tree warden and the urban forestry commission web pages and then tree northampton would have the same link mm -hmm. okay. as a matter of fact sue you could probably make a link on tree northampton's website right to the city website too maybe that might even be easier i don't know i don't manage websites so alicia does link to city yeah something like how we choose the trees Thank you. Um, our next item is uh, spring planting Arbor Day update. Anyone want to take off with this one? Maybe uh, maybe Jen. Uh, okay, Rich and I met with the uh, uh, folks from the school department, Tony and Raleigh, or is it Rolly? Raleigh? Yeah, that's Raleigh, yeah. Raleigh, yeah. Um, who are the maintenance people. Um, so uh we changed the plan somewhat and um i just redid it today and sent the actual map back to the school department uh for tony to give a final approval uh we should be hopefully 
um, if there's no more changes, it'll be 18 trees. And um, uh, the 22nd is uh, the agreed day. The principal asked me to write a little blurb for her newsletter. So I haven't finished that yet, but I'm gonna do that. And then uh, I have a larger map that I'll give to her um, because she'll probably wanna post it somewhere or something like that. So, um, and thank you, David. I was having a techno technology meltdown and he gave me a very easy, <laughs> a very easy, uh, uh, the easy way to do what I need to do. So um, that's pretty uh, good to go. I think she's gonna, the principal is basically gonna try to get volunteers from the school because of the, um, and we'll just organize it the way we normally do. And um, Barbara Devlin was so involved last year. Um, I know an email, David emailed her yesterday or today. But, yeah, um, so I, I think Barbara would like to enlist as many Rotary Club volunteers as she did last year, which is a, that's a lot. So it could be like 30 adults. So we should connect Barbara with, I don't know, whoever's, or if you have two different groups organizing volunteers, which Barbara did it last year, then it all has to get funneled somehow. And she funneled it all for us. So I should, can I, in the little blurb, that's good for me to know, in the little blurb that, in, you know, that I'm sending to the principal, because, you know, obviously the kids should be able to come and their parents if they want to. I mean, so the, the end of school vacation week, so, you know, we may or may not have a lot of yeah in that school, but um, should I put her name and email? How about... Um, are you going to chat the way I with Barbara to see, um, to make sure that she wants to be the, okay. have it all funneled through her? Because basically she had everything ready for the check-in. So she knew who was, who all was coming. And so um, we had, I, I don't remember exactly if she worked directly with somebody at the school who was recruiting or how that all worked. But um, we should powwow with Barbara. Okay. Too, so we see, yeah. you know, in case her her turnout is light or I doubt it will be because Rotary is very committed group. Um, how we want to just coordinate everybody and have everybody feel in, in the know and involved and looped in. Okay. Um, All right. So I should probably email her because I do, I have to generate this like little newsy thing for the. Yeah. For the and that's principal. the same information that should be going simultaneously out to Rotary Club that Barbara will need. Okay. She, All right. She I'll, needs to tell them the date. I think she knows the date. That's uh -huh. it. But she needs to know like a little bit more about the locations and, um, you know more of anything that you anything that would be in that blurb yeah needs to all be coordinated so it's all going out and then any responses or questions are coming back in to everybody so we don't have several different hubs yeah totally i'm glad you drive, said drive us all crazy i'll just say that if you imagine like 20 unskilled adults showing up from rotary and 20 unskilled parents and their and 30 kids it, it tree northampton has an important role because it's really the expert tree planners who sort of supervise two or three amateurs so i i just i mean making the obvious point yeah we have to make sure that the the tree northampton shows up uh with, with numbers but just remind me last time we did this though we were at two different schools right yeah, yes. we were spread fairly thin, but it, mm -hmm. we, I think we pulled it off okay. So if this is going to be a big event, we're involving the Rotary Club. You know, do we want to plant an additional site on that day? I actually think, Rob, that's that's a good avenue to think. To, it's a good avenue because if we have a, if we have let's Dave using David numbers, we have like. 20, 24, you know, that's 40 plus we have another 30 kids. I mean, we're 18 you, trees. Yeah, you're going to be on overload 
with people yeah. and not enough Crazy. tree planting sites. Last year, uh, when I was planting at um, Ryan Road, there were very few kids working. I don't know. There weren't the thirty kids, you know. They, they yeah. You know, I mean, it, it would it would be good. And in, in, uh, Sue, just um, or David, could you just refresh my memory? Is Rotary Club only going to be available for one planting day? And I think that was Barbara's preference. Is just doing okay. it. All right. So if we were to give, if if going by Rob's suggestion, if we were to have another site where we could accommodate twenty people from Rotary Club, we could have them plant in another location, and have the leads planting be for the leads parents and teachers and kids if that is is possible i don't know if that's possible i don't know if we'll, how many volunteers we have from the school i think that's the other unknown question so my impression was that the, that the rotary club planted most of the trees but yeah okay i don't remember there being a lot of many people from the school who ended up getting involved okay all right. I mean, the other thing too different. is to Rob's point. Uh, it, Rob, we may may have to think of some other alternate planting locations that are close by in case we have an abundance of people. Yeah, possibly. I'll look. I'll look. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's always great to have a lot of people, but it's even better to have a lot of people and a lot of trees at the same time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. And a lot of leaders. Um, Especially if this, I don't know what the site's like, but yeah, I, I, I just, say, yeah, if people are spread out all over the place. You've got some really hard root ball. You're either going to have it planted improperly, which is a waste of public money, yeah. or you're going to be running around like trying to get somebody to help. Um, just for your information, the, the um, 30 trees was the max that we could handle on that one day yeah for distribution yeah and, and the majority i believe of those trees i think they were majority were bare root yeah so they were, they were easy to distribute because if you remember planting at school it's a little more complicated because you have to have a staging area that's you can't just stage it like we normally do a planting it has to be staged off from a trailer and then the volunteers came and moved everything just because of the fact that uh, the uh, the way that the although this that's school vacation week so that would be easier, we did the planting on non school vacation week I believe the last time but so just uh, to keep that in the back of your mind Rob when you're thinking about other possible additional spots yeah it, it would be relatively smaller because I think they I think Jen just said eighteen trees at one location so that would mean a maximum of twelve at another. Rich, in, do you think we have a pretty good likelihood of being able to work this out with Chestnut Ridge Nursery in terms of timing? I, I think so. I think actually they're sort of waiting for us to give them an order. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we. I mean, we we they are aware that we're going to order trees. They so I think the sooner we yeah get on their radar, the better. Well, Jen's worked out the order pretty much. So okay. Yeah, I have to make some changes tomorrow morning, and I'll I'll fix the tree tracking sheet. Okay, maybe let me know when you've done it. Okay. Yeah, so, I will. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just ran out of time this morning. I didn't yeah. And I'm I'm curious, is it mostly bare root? Um, hold on one second. I can tell you. Well, it it got massively changed. So I had an original. Hold on one second. Um, um uh, Maybe half. I have to check on one, two. Oh, yeah, it is going to be mainly bare root, as a matter of fact. Yeah. And, and Jen, when, when we actually make up the order, I think we'll probably want to order 30 bare root trees. So we might at, take some trees that aren't bare root off your lip. Sure. You have, you know, substitute bare root ones. It's possible. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, I just have to check on the ones that got added today. Yeah. So that and, means we're going to have um, we're going to have a significant number of bare root trees that need to go in right around that date on other sites, be it that date or 
Yeah, I mean, I think the order will be at least 30 trees and maybe more. Yeah. yeah. Um, Rob, um, on this planting subjects, I amended the uh, stump list that I sent to you and oh. Alicia. Um, in the column where it says notes, I just put uh, the places that I can remember from the top of my head that are not suitable planting sites. Right. Um, and the save column, time. Yeah, the column, you're right. So you don't have to visit those locations. Um, the column on the far left, the date, it indicates when the stump was ground. So you know that that location is ready for planting. Right. Um, some of the other locations where there's stumps, you might be able to plant and offset the tree planting. <laughs> but we're going to try to grind the rest of them Um if this weather holds out, we can, you know, there's no frost in the ground. We could grind any time. Amazing. Rob, are you going to check the um, planting site survey that I did that, that shows all the locations of planting sites? Because I definitely covered that whole neighborhood. Remember when I did the quarter mile radius surveys? In the Leeds neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, I would check it if I could remember where it is. That uh, right. Can you resend it, Molly? Yeah. I'll send, yes, I will. Yeah, I actually think that would be helpful because if we're yeah. in the Leeds area, um, yeah. we could potentially pick up, you know, maybe 10 more plantings that would round it up to, you know, tw uh, 30, 30 bare root trees possibly for that one day. And we could support, yeah, uh, we could support a larger planting initiative. And then, and then Rob, are you, um, we obviously have to talk about actual Arbor Day plantings. I know we're doing the tree whip giveaway of 600 whips. Or oh, I mean, isn't this lead thing on Arbor Day? No, no, it's the week. It's the Saturday before Arbor Day. Oh, actually, okay. Earth Day. It's Earth Day. It's Earth Day. Okay. Yep. And then there's Arbor Day. Arbor Day, I think in the past, Rich, you've tried to pick a place that has a great deal of symbolism and put in some trees that. Okay. Is that right? Isn't that what yeah. you've done before? Yeah, I mean, we could do, we if you wanted to do more mass plantings, we could go back to Bridge Street Cemetery. That's another. You know, they're not urban, they're not in the street, but there's definitely yeah. more places to plant in there, which would be a nice place for everyone to sort of show up, work, and then. Yeah. Um, That's good. Yes. It's, it's a place to put a monument that you can all get around. Yeah. A together moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I think maybe you and I will just communicate to try to figure that out. So we have some information. Yeah. At our, for our next meeting for the rest of the commission. Yeah. Okay. Public shout out for Deborah uh, um, Devorah Levy, who is has been coming to our meetings. She's working on the um, information sheets, setting them up this year. Um, we've kind of in the past borrowed them from, you know, an institution, lock, stock, and barrel. But she's really putting some effort in to make mm -hmm. them as usable as possible for the public. We really want to have a big push to have as many of these whips survive as possible. Great. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Thank you, Devorah. Um, any other questions, comments about Arbor Day? Sue, Sue, thank you. I assume Sue, you're going to uh, manage the uh, volunteers for the tree whip giveaway for both days. Yeah, Vicky's going to help, um, and I ha have taken time off work, and um, I'll be the the steady you know, yeah. consistent person, and then we'll have different volunteers coming through. Okay. Um, but the, so there's one person who's always, you know, consistent. I don't know if you were, I don't think you were at the last meeting, but just a piece of information, uh, the bagging of the tree whips. Um, I the, saw that. Yeah, we're going to do with uh, um, the environmental club at, um, and the science classes at uh, NHS. Oh, that's a go. That's yeah, great. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely a go. I just have to, I, I need to give them a, do we have a ballpark date of delivery? 20, uh, the 24th of April. So whatever that week, the tw 24th, okay. I think is a Monday. I think I have some bags from last year. Yeah, I've been saving newspaper bags. So for the bigger, oh. like, you know, sometimes they're too big. To yeah, the them. roots are too long to fit in the little bags yeah, they right. sent. I will save newspaper bags too because I, well, I got a lot money. of them. You probably don't need. <laughs> I mean, you can sure. 
So, um, yeah, yeah, so wait a minute. It, it's April 24th. Okay. April 24th is the um, date that I requested a delivery. So it'll be any, could be the 24th, could be the 25th. Yep. Uh, just because I wanted to retouch base with them just to, so they don't forget, you know, yep. that, hey, yep. here's the dates. Just put this in your calendar. I'll be in touch. Thanks so, again. That's so, really yeah. cool. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So, Rich, um, yes, sir. If we're going to be doing the school on the 22nd of April, it would be my great preference to start planting at least a week or two before the school so that we kind of have everything running and going. So that'll, of course, depend on the weather. Yes. But yes, we have spoken about starting early, right? I mean, I think that was the conversation we had a few commission meetings ago yeah. about potentially trying to, depending <laughs> upon the weather, trying to capture some... Uh, earlier plantings um so uh if we want to get a uh, if we need like grow bag stock we will probably need to um springboard and get going with our contract if we're going to have one with amherst nursery well, well actually so i was just thinking of using this uh, there's at least 30 trees that are in in the in the at spring growth now that i'd like to plant okay so but yeah i mean I, I i mean i think we would be ready to go again unless the weather I do think it's going to get cold yeah. again. I yeah. just don't know, you know, how, but what it's if, going to do. But if the root balls aren't frozen and the ground's not frozen, we'll start in earlier April. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Good. Yes. Well, because we've gotten caught before where we we don't start until towards the end of April. And then in May, it turns viciously hot. And so we want to get them all in the ground before it gets hot. Or as much as we're going to get in the ground. Okay. Last year, remember, it started out the ground was wet and everything, and it's and then. Oh yeah, we, we thought we were gonna have a great year, and then we we're. Bro. Can I just? Yeah. Ask a clarification question. When I call our email and set up a phone call with Barbara Devlin, are is the vision that now that she's going to organize the rotary people at a separate site than leads no no we're gonna we're gonna talk about leads and then what will happen is we'll we'll divert people to another site if there seems to be an, enough a lot of people i think if we if you were to say we're looking at 18 trees this would mean um yeah. however many volunteers um, Barbara, would you like to work directly with the school as they recruit and okay. keep track of how many people are signing up and keep in touch with um, either you or me? And then we can make sure Vicki's getting the right number of supervisors. See if and Barbara then, wants to be right in the middle of it. And then she'll have a sense of what's coming in through the schools. And, and you can tell, Barbara, that if we get enough volunteers, we'll probably have an additional site for planting. Okay. Hmm. So basically, I need then somebody, maybe I can contact this parent who is really interested uh, at the school, and she can document the volunteers. Yeah, something at like the, that. You know what I mean? There's got to be somebody else connected at that school to that I can put their email or name or whatever on the. I think, yeah, I think at, at um, Ryan Road, we had that person already when we were planning the planting. David okay. might know somebody. No, I mean, we already have a parent. Yeah, we have a parent named Melissa. We do. Yeah. Who's, who's yeah. on the PTO who's really active. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just want to, no when I brighten this thing up, I just want to make sure. Make sure I do it the right way. And, well, you know. I, I would think that you could just take the name of that parent. I met her, the parent, very active. And yeah, just, I need to tell her, though, that, hey, we need you to organize, to, to ha let us at least have a, a ballpark idea of number of volunteers. Right. Well, you Let's might do it with, with Barbara, have Barbara be in touch with her. I don't know. And get yeah, it off that's what I'm thinking. So that whenever there's an update, Barbara has it, the other person has it. Right. Um, Right. Not, not you. Yeah. Everybody's got the the release forms and 
knows you know what time to show up and right all that okay. thing because the, the rotary like they had their own t-shirts right 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 how many right, t-shirts right. what sizes right there gets to be all these little details and barbara was brilliant at being like the point person right and so okay. the idea would be to ask her you know what role do you want to play refresh right. me what did you do last year she, she has meticulous notes everything she's done yeah. okay um okay. ask her how did that work did that work well let's have a plan for this year and she's very detailed and then okay. it'll be like this is what needs to be done by what date and she gets it all done okay so i should talk to her first before i connect with this other yeah parent. get a sense of okay. what role she wants okay. to play because they did get in touch with us and we have a track record of working with them we want to make sure right. that we're centered in this process yep. okay well, I, also, I, it's stating the obvious, but I would just check with Barbara to make sure that sending Rotary Club volunteers off the Leeds campus is it works for her. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you have to say that if if there's an overflow and if she wants an additional sites, right, then we would try to supply them. And as we get a sense of the number of volunteers we have, we can potentially have a second site and making a bigger impact mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay yeah, it's, it yeah you can't happen. really send the people who are coming out to planet leads if they're connected with that community you can't right. send them somewhere yeah. yeah yeah because she seems kind of fixated on leads as a plan, as, as a rotary plan. cares about the schools rotary cares about the schools right and she was a former superintendent so is she okay so david on that note um <clears throat> could you go back and look and see how how many or if any trees that were missing from jackson street or ryan road because that's one of the tasks they could do is go back and replant whatever we missed oh that's a good idea you know uh, you probably have a pretty good sense i think you have maps and stuff yeah i could do that That'd be great because you might pick up five or six trees that way. That's a good There's idea. There's a few dead ones at Jackson Street. There you go. Um, I thought I added to the list, but of the dead tree list, but I'm not sure. It's probably in it. the dead tree. It might be in well, it might be in the dead tree list, but of course we're we're going through another winter and who knows what's dead by now. That was last good point. I think that was last spring or something, the dead tree list or last fall or something. I don't know. But anyway, if you get it pretty soon, that would be great. Um I'm in Maine right now, so. <laughs> but, but but I live in Northampton. Uh, <laughs> uh, I have one follow-up question. Um, David, I know that uh, last year we made some arrangements with, uh, and I think you were one of the people that did the watering at Jackson Street, the places we, we were not able to access. That's right. Yeah. Um, there's going to be a few places at Leeds School that we will not be able to access during the daytime which is mainly the plantings that are in the back of the school. Um, there's another one that potentially that's in a, like a courtyard area on the other side that we won't be able to get either. So I don't know if the, your contact person at Leeds, the PTO person would be willing to put a, a group of people together to, to like do a watering once a week or something. Calendar. Yeah, because we we uh, because of the way the school school starts at eight o'clock in the morning and then um, doesn't get out until uh, the two ten in the afternoon. So lead school, we're in the same predicament as we we were with Ryan Road and and Jackson Street and trying to get to locations that have uh, it'll be either a lot of parents dropping kids off or buses or or children themselves. So I think the Jackson and Ryan Road need new calendars for the coming year too. Yes, volunteers, waterers. It's a total of six trees that they would have to. You can get the ones in the front, right? Uh, yes. Rich in the in that front bus, not the main bus loop, but the front bus loop. Yeah, we can get everything that's on the outside of the school because it's okay. just way for school yeah. session to uh, after eight o'clock when everyone's inside yeah. and the parents are gone. It's fine. Right. It's six just trees. It's just that the gates in the back of the school right. are closed during the daytime, just like Jackson Street. So our access yep. is limited. Yep. And by the time we we're able to get there in the afternoon, it would be almost like two thirty, quarter or three. Right. Right. Which it's a total of six trees. Okay. All right. So you want, so I'm reaching out to Melissa about that. Y yes, please, if you wouldn't mind, I, I appreciate it. 
All right. Any other questions, comments, thoughts about the Arbor Day? Uh, I'm just going to keep this as a running agenda item until we get to Arbor Day, if that's okay with everyone. Um, it needs to be, yeah. We're all yeah, doing that. Okay. Uh, and I'll add on our next, if you want, on our next agenda as well, I'll put the uh, discussion for the neighborhood tree planting program, if you'd like. Uh, Sue, and then uh, I'll try to figure out if we're going to have a guest speaker or not. That might alter what the Perfect. agenda. Like. You can bump it. I mean. Okay. All right. Okay. All That's right. Fine. Uh, any other uh, business not anticipated by the chair? Just to reiterate, mark those calendars, April 22nd, all leaders on deck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, uh, Sue, maybe you could... Uh, Cue up Vicky about this already, or yep, I just wrote that down. Like, I better give Vicky that date and have her get out an email. Thank you, Rob. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Hey Sue, you just sound like you're on NPR there for a minute. <laughs> yeah, hey, I'm on the air. I know. I know. Uh, <laughs> any, My NPR uh, voice. Yeah. Any any other. Uh, uh, questions, comments before we have a motion to adjourn the meeting? None. All right. So Molly, thanks for doing that list and and uh, everyone, would you get a chance? Molly, maybe you could send out an email when you when you after you're done adjusting it a little bit so we know to look at it. Okay. That, that would be helpful. I'll give you the link for it directly. Thank you. This is this is the leads list, right? No, that's that's a separate thing, Rob. That's okay. I'm gonna get that to you too. He's talking about the prior the goals for 2023. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, thank you. All right. If nothing, nothing else, then I will ask for a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll second that. All right. We have uh any discussion on the floor. Uh seeing none. Um, I would just raise our hands. All in favor? Aye. Perfect. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you. Big thanks, Bonnie, because I was out.